Today I'm going to show you something so evil and so vile in this book right here, which I'll be showing you in closer detail, um, that's probably going to really shock you. And it is certainly something that the Talmudic rabbis uh, do not want people to understand. They don't want people to know. What I have here is the Talmud, the, Sin, the Stein Salts edition, volume 7, Tractate Kitabut, part 1. You can see it right there. I did a video on these a little while ago, the whole set. We have the whole thing. Cost us over $2,000 for this. Um, and the fruits of this are going to start paying off. Um, right now, believe it or not, my son, my 10-year-old son, is actually going through one of these, and he's writing down notes for me. So anything he sees that's heretical or nonsense, he's actually writing notes. He's got, I think, uh, somewhere around 40 or 50 different <laughs> uh, page numbers and, and notes. The uh, Lord is blessing my son greatly. I'm actually really blown away by it. Please do pray for Oliver. Um, the Lord's doing a real work in my son's life. And he, he actually asked to do it. He said, Father, could I start looking through those? I'd like to find some things, see what they actually say. And uh, it's amazing what the Lord is doing. And I think it's a lot of you have been praying for him, so I think that that has a lot to do with it. But um, I'm very blessed to have a son like him. But um, I'm going to show you something here, um, which is going to be very horrible. And I'm not going to read certain parts because of YouTube's policies and, and things. And so I'll, I'm going to let you read it. And I don't really like to read horrible, wicked stuff like this. Uh, let me zoom out here a little bit first. Okay, Mishnah, whatever the Hebrew is there, it has already been established in a previous Mishnah above uh, 10b that a woman who is presumed to, be, to presumed to be a virgin at the time of her marriage is entitled to a ketubah of 200 denarim, whereas a woman who is presumed to be a non-virgin at the time of her marriage is entitled to a ketubah, marriage agreement is what a ketubah is, of 100 denarim, a mena, whatever the Mishnah we are about, uh, to consider continues in its efforts to determine which women are considered virgins for the purpose of the ketubah and which are treated as non-virgins. If a grown-up man has intercourse with a less than three years old. Are you seeing this? And they're not condemning this. Or if a young boy less than nine years old has had with a grown woman or if a woman has been injured by a stick and as a result her, sorry about that, has been ruptured, in each of these cases the woman is entitled to a ketubah of 200 denarim when she marries. Okay, and you can keep on reading there. You can pause it and read it if you really want to. Um, now I take great issue with that. My son, which I mentioned earlier, is 10 years old. And according to this Satanism right here, um, a woman, a Jewish woman, could have a uh, relationship with my 10 year old. And um, if I was a Jew, hey, that three year old girl over there, she's really hot. Excuse me? And this is what these uh, Jews at the Torah Institutes are learning. I'm going to go learn the Talmud. I mean, maybe they're not all learning the Talmud and things, but a lot of them do. It takes seven years to go through this garbage. I wonder what kind of uh, horrible things go on in these families, between these families, when their holy book right here that they deny the word of God to uplift this. And this holy book says, three-year-old girl, if you're a man, you're a woman, ten-year-old, or a nine-year-old, excuse me, nine-year-old boy. Oh, well, that's just conspiracy stuff. That's been debunked. We've done, we fact-checked it, and it's not true. Uh, I just showed it to you. Overhead camera just showed you the page and the quotes right here. That's why they're so evil. That's why they're so bad. Are they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But let me give you a verse of Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Hmm. Jump up two verses to verse 13. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Did you know that Jesus Christ died for sinners? Did you know that Paul said that he was the chiefest of sinners? Paul was a Jew. Okay, read Romans chapter 11 um, of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, Paul talks about being a Jew over and over again. And what a lot of you people forget out there is, you look at something like that that I just showed you and you say, oh, wicked, oh, I just, oh, I just got to rip their throats out, do this kind of thing. You forget the message of the scriptures that Jesus Christ came to his own and his own received him not. Well, you see, then they're done. No, because Paul wasn't done. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Oh, but uh, sorry, Saul, because you're those wicked Jews, those evil, horrible, Talmudic Jews. That are... And a lot of these traditions, they go back, by the way, into the B.C. years, you know, before Christ. That's what B.C. means. Uh, it's not B.C.E., before the common era, uh, before the common error <laughs> with the whole system. No, it's before Christ and A.D., Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, Jesus Christ is God. God manifests in the flesh. I've proved it for years and years. It's what the King James Bible teaches. And you wicked Jews out there, you qualify to be saved. Your sin qualifies you. It is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation. Gentiles and Jews. doesn't matter where you're from. If you're a sinner, a wicked, filthy, Talmud-observing Jew, you can be saved. Jesus shed his blood on the cross to pay for your sins. He can wash them all away. If you accept him, he can make you a new creature. Saul was a Christian murdering Jew hunted Christians down, hailing men and women, committed them to prison. He watched them die. Probably, enjoy, well, I, I know he enjoyed it. He, he watched uh, oh, Stephen. Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 8 goes into, and he watched Stephen die, watched him be stoned to death. They laid his, their coats down at Saul's feet, and Saul's just standing over there going, I got another one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Boy, they hit him good on that one. Boy, yeah, I heard the skull crash. Yeah, he's done now. Lays there and there's just a pool of blood coming out of Stephen's head. <laughs> All right, back to work. Time to go kill some more. God saved him. Um, are the Jews doing some things that are really wicked right now? Yes, they are. Should you get upset about it as a Christian? Yes, you should. Should you uh, expose... Their sin? Yes. God is no respecter of persons. You shouldn't be either. I shouldn't be. Raise up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their sins. Spare not. I'm not sparing any of you wicked Jews out there. You need Jesus. He's your only hope. And you Christians out there that get such an attitude against these Jewish people to the point where you just want to see them killed and slaughtered in large numbers and whatever else and you lose your mercy... You're forgetting the message of the New Testament. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget it. The vilest offender that truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Like the old hymn says. Oh, unless you don't believe that. Jesus only died for the Gentile Christians, huh? And a few Jews in the early part of the first century there. But these Jews of today, they're just wicked. They're just horrible Talmudic satanic synagogue of Satan and who was before a persecutor, blasphemer, injurious, whatever else. Um to the Jews out there, don't go walking around acting like you're holier than Christians. You've got some special little road to the the name 
Hashem. You know, I've got some guy, you know, I worship the name. Sounds like some kind of Hollywood actor that's screwed up in the head from years of drug abuse. Uh, you don't have some special inroad. We do. Our New Testament is based on better things than what you had in the Old Testament. And Jesus died. And you actually have an advantage as a Jew, by the way. Okay? Uh, physical Jews have an advantage. Romans chapter 3. Read it. Verses 1 through 6. Read it. Don't give me the spiritual Jew thing there in chapter 2, verse 28 through 29. It could, continues into chapter 3. Okay? <laughs> okay. Yes, we are born in with a spirit of adoption. We become spiritually Jewish. Yes, I get that. Uh, I'm connected to a Savior that's Jewish, so that would make me, I'm part of his body, well then that would make me spiritually similar to the Jews there, a spirit of adoption and everything else. Um, that's true. But there's also the physical Jews, and they have an advantage if you give up this kind of satan satanic uh, horrible stuff here. So, we'll be coming out with a lot more stuff on the Talmud as we have time, as we go through it. And I say we because my whole family is involved in this. My wife, myself, and my son. My little 10-year-old boy. And um, if you really can call yourself, you look in the mirror, if you're Jewish, you can look in the mirror and say, I believe in a system that says it's okay to molest a 3-year-old girl or a 9-year-old boy. And if you think that God is leading you right now, you might want to check into who that God is that's leading you. Because it's not Jehovah God. Okay? I pray that you think about this. Time is running out for you. We're heading for the time of Jacob's trouble. And the vast majority of Jews are going to be killed in that time. And now you know why. <laughs>